So there's two questions in this video. One is from a late stage startup uh, during an onsite, and the other is uh, during an actual test that a company gave somebody during a screen. Uh, so here they are. Your interviewer invites you to play a card game. In this game, there are three cards. One is labeled with a one, one is labeled with a two, and one is labeled with a zero. On each round, you draw a card. Initially, you're asked to play one round. However, the number that you draw is added to the number of rounds that you must play. What is the probability that this game ends? So I'll give you about three seconds to pause the video, just in case you want to try this on your own, and then I'll continue with my solution. So first, let's think through just how the first round can go. You initially start in this state of the game. One third of the time, the game will end on the first round because you draw the zero card, so you add no more rounds. One third of the time, you'll draw the card that adds one round, which is basically bringing you back to this initial state of the game. And one third of the time, you'll draw a card that adds two more rounds to the game, which sort of duplicates this initial state. So now each of these two instantiations of the original round uh, would have to ultimately end in order for the whole game to end. So now I'm going to walk through the different scenarios for each of these two games. So now, just like the original game, for each of these two sub-games, a third of the time they can end, a third of the time they can kind of replicate the current state, and a third of the time they'll duplicate. So now you might be thinking, how do we model this? So the way to go about this is to kind of assign variables to each of these probabilities. So I'll call this p0, I'll call this p1, and I'll call this p2. And then the tricky step is to realize that we're going to need a variable to represent kind of this whole process. I'll call this pd for the probability that the game will eventually be done. So from here, the game can end in three ways. You can pick the zero card on the first round and hence end the game immediately. Or you can pick the one card, in which case this game uh, repeats itself. Or you could pick the two card, in which case there's now two copies of this game. But since the game is essentially the same, and since what we need is for the game to end in copy one and also in copy two, and since the two copies are independent, this term reduces to the square of the process itself. Okay, and now this could be rearranged into a quadratic equation, and then plug in the values from the problem, and simplify a little bit, and then we can factor the quadratic, and here we can see that the only solution for this quadratic is that the probability of the game eventually being done uh, is 1. So if you found the setup of this question challenging or unintuitive, uh, something to look into would be a branching process, which is a type of stochastic process that's common in fields uh, where you might be concerned about extinction. So for example, common places where this comes up is like, say there's some type of species and it has a probability of producing one offspring or two offspring or no offspring and you want to know the probability that that species will die. So you get through this question quickly, you're feeling pretty good, and the interviewer says, ah, well I've got one more in the time we have left. And so you say, all right, I am ready. And the interviewer says, I'll deal you cards, one at a time. These cards are either labeled one or two. You can't keep track of exactly how many cards you've seen, but you know that whenever you're dealt a one, there's about a two-thirds chance that you'll get a one the next time. And whenever you're dealt a 2, there's about a 5 sevenths chance that you'll get a 2 uh, the next time. What is the proportion of cards that are labeled 1? So I'll give you about 3 seconds to think about this, to pause the video, try to work through it, uh, and then I'll go through my solution. So this is another process sort of question. Uh, I'll start by drawing out the states that you could be in. So you could either uh, receive a 1 card or a 2 card. If you receive a 1 card, then there's about a 2 thirds chance that you'll stay with a 1. If you receive the 2 card, there's about 5 out of 7 chance that you'll stay with the 2, which leaves a 1 third chance for the kind of case where you have a 1 card and get a 2 next, and a 2 7th chance for the case where you have the 2 card and get the 1 card next. So from here we have to figure out like what are the important pieces uh, of this process to model. So since we're looking for a proportion of cards that end up being labeled 1, uh, let's come up with variables for the proportion of cards that are 1 and the proportion of cards that are 2. And since there's only two possible things that the cards could be, uh, we know that the sum of these two proportions is going to be 1. 
So we have one equation, two unknowns, so we're going to need another equation to figure out uh, this proportion of cards that are labeled one. And there's two that we can use. First we can formulate the dynamics for the proportion of cards that are labeled one. Or likewise we could do this for the proportion of cards that are labeled uh, two. So for the solution I'm going to use these two, which imply that the proportion of cards labeled one is two thirds times the proportion of cards labeled one. Those are the ones that stay here, plus two sevenths. And now I'm taking advantage of that first equation to fill in one minus the proportion of cards that are labeled one in place of the proportion that are labeled two. And then from here we do some algebra. And find that out of this deck, the proportion of cards that are labeled a one are six thirteenths. So this was another problem that was a little bit trickier. Um, if you feel like you need to look into something, um, the concepts that this is related to are Markov processes and specifically a stationary Markov process. So I have a few more things to say before I end this video. First, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below so that they can be addressed. Second, these videos actually take time to make, and that's time that I could spend doing things that are more fun, like exploring San Francisco. So if you like this video, please make it official by clicking the like button below, and that'll let me know that these are valuable and that I should continue making them. And then uh, finally, try subscribing if you want to see the latest videos. Thank you for watching.